So got in last night, got started on the Meridian, um, got it washed down, started some paint correction, actually got the wing done, part of the fuselage. Um, really just wanted to get a head start on it since we're really squeezing that one in the schedule. But th this is the plane I'm here for this weekend, the Mooney. I'm very excited to work on it. Um, this is the first Mooney I've done, so it, it's nice to learn about a new aircraft model. Earlier went around with the owners and, and kind of looked at the different areas and, and identified, you know, things that are different on a Mooney and I'll share those as well. There, there's some, there's a cool way that this plane trims itself. Um, started with a no rinse wash this morning, got everything wiped down. There's a lot of exhaust and oil on the belly, so that all got washed off. It, it sits really low. Uh, so polishing the underside is going to be a little interesting working like that. The plan for today is to do a single step paint correction. There are a lot of swirls and scratches and buff marks and sanding marks um, just from when it left the factory, which is common. We see that on a lot of new aircraft, right? So we're going to address those and um, hopefully, hopefully finish paint correction all today and then we'll coat it tomorrow. I'm gonna show you something that kind of drives me crazy. So, when we talk about factory new, right? You think perfect. Well, not so much. There's this thing that you see on factory new that all, all manufacturers do. I'm not picking on Mooney here. This is a beautiful paint job, beautiful airplane. Um, Cirrus does it, Cessna does it, uh, Beechcraft does it, everyone does this. In fact, you go buy a um, Lamborghini, or Ferrari, or a Bentley, Rolls Royce sometimes, um, you see all of this. We see this on the car side of the business all the time on the exotics. Sanding marks. So you don't see it much here, but I'll uh, get a close-up shot here. Just this just streak of dullness. It, it, it looks like a, like a smudge, like, like just smudge. Um, the, the reason they sand planes is because if you look closely, you can see there's a little bit of orange peel and that's just the way they're, they're painted, that, that paint doesn't lay down perfectly flat as it dries. So they sand it to, to level those peaks and valleys. Good, right? That's fine. We, we, we don't want orange peel because that changes the texture of the paint and, and that might add drag, but they, they don't really like polish it out or if they do, their, their polishers have so many fillers in them that it is concealing the sanding marks or they don't care, I don't know. Anyway, um, in this case, it's comical because it, it's kind of like a wave. Like it, it, it's like someone's like, all right, sand here, okay. And just like rub the buffer on it and now it's, it's done. But um, I'm gonna hit this with a little more aggressive step. There's a few kind of spots here and there that are just really eyesores. The one step correction doesn't quite take them out. So we're just going to do a little bit more aggressive paint correction there and uh, try and reduce, if at all possible, eliminate all of these sanding spots. Sometimes they're a little bit too deep and it's not prudent to fix them. But in many cases, we can significantly improve the appearance because this, this just looks like a stain. Like th this looks like I wiped something on you know, may, maybe had some donuts and I, I wiped it on and, and the sugar is all still on the paint. But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take care of this.
So that was the aggressive step. This is a wool pad, high speed um, compound. We're going to wipe it off and see if that did anything. If it's to our satisfaction, we'll go to a finishing step. If not, we'll just repeat this exact same step again. So that's actually significantly better. There's a few areas down here um, that have a little bit of sanding marks left. Those might be too deep, or I may have just not got enough pressure on there yet, so I'm gonna give it one more try and see if I can remove those. If they come out, great. If not, we're not gonna keep trying and trying because we're just gonna eat away paint that really doesn't need to be taken off. So, I'm gonna give it one more pass. However, this pad just worked really hard. So I'm gonna blow it out, get rid of this uh, spent polish residue, um, any clear coat that came off, all of that's gonna be bogging down this pad. And when this pad is, is loaded up like this, it's actually not gonna work as well anymore. In fact, it's gonna put marring into the paint. So we become part of the problem that way. So I'm gonna blow this out real quick, do another pass and we'll reassess. So we got a clean pad again, blew out all the residue, spent polish, add a little bit more in here. And this time we're just gonna focus on the areas that are remaining. So even though it looks like this whole area um, got polished, the way I angle the polisher, we're actually just putting peak pressure down in this area here. So yeah, there, there's some contact here, but we're really focusing all of that energy right there. So these sanding marks all came out really nicely, actually. There, uh, there's a little bit of micro marring left behind, and, and I tried to capture it on camera, but it, it's really subtle. But basically, because we're using a pretty aggressive pad at high speed, and we're using a diminishing abrasive compound, so it starts off really coarse, and then the longer you work it, the, it, it kind of fines down and produces a finer finish. Because I did a pretty fast second step, that second pass that we did, um, it didn't fully break down, but I don't want it to fully break down because I'm using a wool pad. You don't finish with a wool pad necessarily. Um, we're gonna go over it again and uh, just do a light polish with a foam pad and that's gonna gloss it up even more. So, so it'll be maximum glossy and now I'm not leaving behind marks because the micro marring, that's my fault at this point. So I'm gonna do the one step on the rest of it. As we see the, these spots, we'll address them, take them out. But overall, the one step correction is really nice on this um, particular age of paint. So. We're gonna keep going with that. Once the uh, fuselage is done, the tops of the wings are already done. Go on the underside, do the most fun part of the airplane, and uh, then coating. Yesterday went pretty well. Didn't get as much done. Um, well, I actually, we got a lot done. Uh, didn't finish all of the paint correction yet. We'll, we'll do that today. Uh, the fuselage is done, wings are done, tops, tail is done. There's a little bit of work around the spinner left to be polished. And then there's a little bit of um, work around the tail cone to be polished. After that, I'm gonna join Brian on the underside. He's been chugging away at that. It's, uh, it's a somewhat difficult aircraft because of the raised rivet heads, because of the, 
kind of indentations. It, it's a, it's kind of a complex shape, and and, and it's low as well. So I'm um, just going a little bit slower, but the plant is looking incredible. The uh, the other cool thing about this plant, actually, let me show you. So the characteristic of Mooney aircraft, this whole tail end, this and this all one piece and it hinges back and forth a lot of aircraft have a trim tab here so a little control surface this is the big control surface but they have a little control surface that moves the bigger control surface so you can trim your plane in flight so it it, it keeps a certain airspeed um, with this so so that's an extra control surface it adds a little bit of drag with this they just move the whole thing. So, so it, it just changes the whole angle of attack on this entire surface uh, to trim out in flight. It, it, it reduces drag, but um, where the skin moves up here, so up here is where that hinge sits. So we made sure to move the plane uh, trim all the way down and get as much covered skin here then move it all the way forward and get the uh, underside of it covered so things you learn anyway we're gonna get back to work and uh, I'll touch back in uh, when we're getting ready to coat So the paint correction is all done. Um, that took quite a bit of time actually. The underside is really tight and uh, all the rivet heads just gonna slow things down a bit. But all that hard work, airplane's super shiny. This paint is pretty soft though. So, so there's a reason it was all scuffed up is because the, the paint is quite soft. Um, to reduce that, so, so to not scratch your paint means to not touch your paint. You still wanna wash it, so. We put a ceramic coating on. The ceramic coating will make it a lot easier to clean, but it also actually will harden the paint just a little bit. So um, paint's gonna be easier to clean, less effort to clean, less friction, less scratching. Uh, the coating is also gonna protect it from UV exposure, um, bug etching, that kind of stuff. So overall, uh, it doesn't make sense to put in I don't know, 20, 30 hours of paint correction, then not protect it, right? So for the coating, it's a liquid. We put it on an applicator pad here and uh, you just kind of wipe it in. Pick a little section. Get it evenly spread out. Basically you go around the whole plane and do this. Um, I already got the fuselage done, so the fuselage is super slippery. The uh, wings are almost entirely coated. Just got to do the other wing, then do the underside. Um, then the underside of the wings, the underside of the fuselage is done. Brian had to leave, but he actually helped out big time with that. So, um, you know, it's just a little bit of work left. So we take another towel here, remove the coating residue, and get it nice and level. And on this particular plane, because it's TKS equipped, um, we take a lot of care to kind of wipe along there. So we're not getting any coating on the TKS panels. Then we take another towel and kind of get the rest of the residue off. 
In about five, 10 minutes, this is gonna be waterproof. It's gonna to continue to cure overnight and plenty can be put into service pretty much right away. There's uh, no need to wait all that long. And there you go. So we didn't do it before, but look at that. That's how slick the wing is now. So I'm gonna keep going, uh, jump over to the other side, get that wing done, get the undersides done. We're gonna clean the seats real quick. Um, the leather is light gray, so it'll make a nice big difference. Do that and then head on home. Coated. The underside is coated. The whole plane is coated. And then I just went outside for a second. Look. There's daylight. I finished the plane. There's still daylight. It's snowing a little bit though, but there's daylight. So we're actually going to clean a little bit of leather on the inside. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like, but then I'm going to pack up and drive home. Of course, we're still going to do beauty shots, but first we're going to clean some leather. So I got a leather scrubber here, and uh, these are just tiny little microscopic hairs. Well, they're not microscopic, you can see them. Got some leather cleaning foam. I'm gonna get the foam on there, and uh, just gently scrub it in. I'm pushing just hard enough for those bristles to kind of make contact, get into those pores and change direction, but I don't wanna scrub too hard so then you start losing these hairs actually you'll lose the hairs before you damage the seat which is a good thing i suppose so by frequently changing direction like that you really get in all the natural creases and folds and the cool thing with the foam it lifts up whatever crap you're getting out of there so it doesn't sink back in. It gives you a little bit more time to wipe it off with a towel. So do that. Get the towel. Gently wipe it down. How well can you see that? So before, after. This is always a good time. to make a big difference without really all that much work. I'm not running a loud polisher, it, you know, it's not noisy, or dusty, it's just good honest scrubbing and chemistry. I quite enjoy cleaning leather. I wouldn't say it's my favorite thing to do in the world, but I'd say it's probably among my favorite things to do detailing. All done. Time to pack up. The Mooney is done. Tools are put away. I'm ready to go home. We're gonna get a few beauty shots and uh, we'll end the video with that. But uh, just to recap, a lot of paint correction went into this plane. It was a difficult paint correction because the paint was rather soft. Also, there was a lot of paint defects in there from the factory that were just difficult to address. Um, the, the owners actually told me that when this plane was built, Mooney only built like six planes that year. Uh, so they were sending these out to a different facility to get painted. So that could be where some of those paint issues may have come from. Um, it, it was challenging working that low, 
you know, especially if you're trying to polish, you know, it's, you got to polish it right in your face or you're kind of stretching out with your arm to try and control that tool. So that was something that ended up taking some time as well, more than I had anticipated. Um, but the re results are there. Aircraft looks amazing. I'm, uh, I'm excited for the owners to experience how much easier it will be. This isn't a hangar queen. This plane flies quite a bit. So these guys are going to have a great time with it for the next few years as the ceramic coating is going to protect the paint. It's going to protect that soft red and black paint, um, keep it from scratching, mostly because they won't have to wash it as much. So there's just going to be a lot less friction in there and that's going to help, um, help preserve that finish we uh, worked so hard on. I'm going to be in North Carolina next week uh, doing a Malibu or a Meridian up there. I think it's a Meridian. Until then, subscribe if you enjoyed the videos, share them with someone that you think would enjoy them as well. And uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.